welcome back. And listen, let's just get straight into it. This is my April wrap up. I can't contain myself. Guess how many books? Guess how many books I read in April? 16! I am so happy. I have never read 16 books in a month before. I think before this, my highest was 14. So like, I really slayed, slay energy this month. <laughs> It's giving, it's giving share. So today we're gonna to be doing my April wrap up. If you're new here, I don't go through every book I read in the month, like giving my opinions, because I often vlog them all. There's a vlog coming this weekend actually, that will show you how I read so many books this month. What I do is I do my reading statistics, which I'm obsessed with. I love reading statistics. I am such a nerd. I think they're so interesting. I love when I hear other people's. So we go through them first. Then we do my disappointments, my surprises, and my hits. So we're kind of going through like the best and the worst of the month. For me that's just a lot more fun to film. I think it'd be a lot more fun to watch rather than just like sitting here and watch me go through like all these books that were like three and four like in middle of the road like books and it's just not that fun. So I read 16 books this month. In terms of pages read, that is 4,387, which I don't know if it's, that's the most pages I've ever read because I read a lot of short books this month. So the average pages per day is 146. The average book length was 274 pages. So that shows you that I did read quite a few shorter books this month and that's what helped me read 16, but who cares? <laughs> Look over there. Where? My average rating was a 3.62, not my highest of the year so far, not my lowest. I had a few really good reads, but I also had a few like middle of the road three stars. So I don't know, it, it doesn't feel like the best reading month in terms of quality, I don't think. Interestingly, the average time spent on my TBR for a book was eight and a half months. I had owned the book on average for eight and a half months, which is definitely the longest we've had whilst we've been tracking that. I think other ones have been like two months or something. I've been reading a lot of books that I've just acquired, but I read quite a few that have been on my TBR for quite a while this month, which is actually, I think that's quite positive. I think you want a mix of both, right? There were some books on here that I literally just acquired that I read this month. I think the longest book that had been on my TBR was 27 months. Yes, this yes. is a concern and a worry. <laughs> well, that's quite a long time, but I think, you know, eight and a half months, I like that I got a few books that had been on my TBR for a longer off this month. Okay, in terms of ratings, I gave out two five stars, one 4.5 star, six four stars, three 3.5 stars, one three star, one 2.5 star, one two star, and one 1.5 star. <laughs> In terms of the genres that I read, I read, oh my god, I read nine fantasy. I can't believe it was so much fantasy. One graphic novel, one magical realism, one non-fiction, one romance, two sci-fi, and one thriller. No mystery this month. Or well, the thing is, in May, I'm going to read so much mystery. <laughs> I've got a lot of mystery that I need to get to. So I suppose that is going to balance it out. In terms of the format, I read one audiobook, one ebook, eight mixed media, which probably means I had like the physical and audiobook or ebook and audiobook and six physical books. So I typically do read a lot of mixed media. I do like if I can getting the audiobook and the physical book and reading along. I think it keeps me a lot more focused. It just helps me read more essentially because otherwise it's easier for me to get distracted. In terms of audience, I read, oh this is interesting, eight adult books, one middle grade and seven YA. So typically it's always been 50-50 between adult and then YA and middle grade, which it is exactly this month, like literally exactly. But for the rest of the year, I've been reading a lot more adult. The reason I read so much YA this month is because I finished The Raven Cycle, so that's three of those books. I unwrapped one and wrapped up, so it was kind of like skewed because of that. But I've, I'm having to be a lot more like selective, I think, with the YA that I do pick up. In terms of how I acquired the books, one was from Audible, six were gifts, two were from Kindle Unlimited, four were books I bought myself, and three were sent to me by the publisher. So that's a pretty good mix. Oh, series stats, as many of you know, I'm trying to finish a lot of series this year. Well, 
I read five books that were part way through series, but I read six books that were firsts in series and five that were standalones. I started a lot more series this month. I think I hadn't started any series this year until this month, or maybe I started one in March. So other than that, I hadn't started any series this, this year, and this month I started six. But I DNF'd one of those series, so it's fine. <laughs> Well, it's not fine because it means all of my progress I've made in finishing series this this month, this year, is gone out the window. But I mean, honestly, <laughs> the girl did it to her damn self. But I've already made progress in some of those series and I'm hoping this month I'll finish two of those that I started this month, so... It should be fine. And then author status, I read one debut, nine that I'd read before, and six that were new to me. Okay, that is all our statistics. Let's get into the disappointments first. Let's talk about the books that made me sad. <laughs> By far, my most disappointing book of the month was The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. I am so freaking sad about this. I've got a whole reading vlog about this, so like, let's not get too into it, because if you want to go through my whole experience, you can go watch the wrapped up reading vlog for this month. But, um, she wasn't it. She wasn't it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So we're following this girl. She kind of finds out she's like a demon or has like demon blood and she gets, they're like, okay. So these girls are hated in society, right? But also they're making the nation, the king or whatever, is making an army out of these girls to like fight these monsters that are like plaguing the land. So like, we hate you, but like, you're like our most prized army ever. The logic ain't logicking. It's, um, how do we get from point A to point B? Mm -mm. I feel like we need to recalculate. <laughs> he hated the writing this. I'm so sad. I gave this 1.5 stars, which is the lowest rating I've given this month other than I gave one star, one one star last month, but I DNF'd that, but I still wanted to rate it because I like feel like I'd suffered enough through it. <laughs> but this is like the lowest rated book I've given where I've actually finished the book. The writing just was not for me. It felt very cinematic. I feel like it was described very well. A problem I often have with like low rated YA is that I can't picture it. I can't picture what's happening. And that was not a problem I had with this, but the writing just like really rubbed me up the wrong way. I didn't feel like any of the characters had any character development. They were like, just basically like, do you do you remember, did anyone have those books as a kid where you'd have dolls and you'd have like cut out clothes? This is a very niche reference. Cut out clothes and you could like make like, it'd just be like pages and books, but you'd like cut out the clothes and you'd make outfits in the books. Yeah, these are like cardboard cutouts with like cute outfits put on them. <laughs> I like don't remember who any of these people were. There were so many people and I don't, I couldn't tell you who any of them were. It was just very disappointing for me. I had high hopes for this. So this is a series I DNF'd. This is the first in the series. I'm not gonna be continuing on with the series. The ending was disappointing. I really did not like much about this and I feel so bad saying it. I hate being mean, but it's the truth. <laughs> I feel for me too. My next disappointment, I think I gave this two stars, but actually it perhaps is a one, I think I'm gonna change it to a 1.5 also, which takes my average rating for the month down a little bit. But it is The Disassembly of Doreen Gerard by Ryan Collett. So I read this in a reading vlog where I read books that publishers had sent to me and had been on my TBR for the longest amount of time. I wanna clarify, <laughs> I do get around to a lot of the art I got sent. However, back in the day, I would often like, not request books like publishers it's still now publishers like reach out saying do you want a review copy of this book and I would just accept all the books that I'd never heard of that I really had never heard of the author the it synopsis didn't interest me it was just like a free book so I was like yeah yeah okay and now I really try not to do that well I don't do that so like don't think I'm just like stealing all of the books from publishers and not reading them that's not what's happening I make a concerted effort to get around the ones that are sent to me and I've requested so like please don't panic <laughs> this is like one of the weirdest fucking books I've ever read and not in a good way like in a in a bad way in a terrible way in a menace to society way this book is as much of a menace to society as Will Schuster is She's like going through a bit of a mental breakdown. She's like going through it. Dali has been through it. She's looking out her window one day and she witnesses two young boys get killed in a car crash, basically. And she's like, oh, time to run, time to run. <laughs> And she meets this very witch woman who kind of takes her under her wing and they go traveling together, running away from this policeman who um, is obsessed with finding her to talk to her about the case. It's very strange. And then the ending of this book 
is one of the sh I don't understand. It was trying to tell me something. It was trying to be avant-garde. It was like walking into an art museum and it being like, this art uh, is the meaning of life. Look how it shows the fluidity, but the stagnation. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a piece of fabric. It's a piece of fabric. It's a piece of fabric. Do you know what I mean? That was the energy. <laughs> It was so strange and I just hated the whole experience of reading it. I just made myself, I should just DNF'd it if I'm honest, but I wanted to like finish it because obviously it was sent to me and I wanted to give it a fair shot and yeah, no. And then like, um, well then this was actually like probably a five star prediction for me and I ended up giving it 2.5 stars and that was Disfigured by Amanda LeDuc. So this is non-fiction about disability and fairy tales and disabilities representation in kind of media and fairy tales and I read this as the this was the March book club pick but typically I end up reading the book club picks in the next month because I like to read them really close to the live show so yeah this was my March patron book club pick and we all pretty much didn't like it we were all kind of like low ratings and had very similar opinions which is surprising because I've only really heard good things about this for me the main problem with this was it was half memoir half trying to be academic well not trying to be because it says at the start i'm not trying to be academic but like it is kind of what it's trying to be academic non-fiction it's half and half and i don't think the two mesh well because i think it trying to it tries to extrapolate from each other when really they you can't make those kind of conclusions we all kind of felt like that and i would have genuinely preferred it be a memoir i love the memoir sections about Amanda LaDuke's life and what she's been through. I really liked the parts talking about how fairy tales have kind of played into her life and her perception of her own disability. But then when it trans translated into like the academic history of fairy tales, history of disability aspects, we were jumping from point A to point Z. Like it was like, whoop. <laughs> there were a lot of there were a lot of very like big leaps made in conclusions and like very some statements that some of us were like, what? <laughs> You'd often say it's not a big leap to say it's not a it, you know and it girl it is <laughs> it is it reminded me of when I was like in year one at university and you would find say in a reading you did like lots of different readings for your essay and you found a line from a reading that in the context of the reading does not support your argument but if you just take that one line out of context it does I'm a genius <laughs> it felt like we had a lot of that so I was very disappointed because I had expected so so much from this and it did deliver Tell me, baby, where are you going? Goes on so surprises i didn't have many surprises this month i would say only i only really had one and it's not even really a surprise but it's Under One Roof by Ali Hazelwood so this shouldn't be a surprise because The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood is the only romance I've ever given five stars. I just was not expecting as much from this because it is a very short kind of novella and I thought we wouldn't have enough time to like get the romance going and like you know get really get into the nitty gritty of the romance but we did! <laughs> we did it? Yes! We've won! Yes! I loved it. I gave this 4.5 stars. So we're essentially following these two characters as they have to live together because they own the same house. They kind of own 50% of this house. So they have to live together and they hate each other and then they, you know, obviously we know the direction it takes. And Ali Hazelwood, you know, she just gets what I want. She gets the kind of tension that I want to be built throughout the romance. I love how they kind of went apart and came together very slowly. I thought it was very beautiful. I loved the scenes at the end of the romance, you know, reached its peak. <laughs> but I will say, Miss Ali Hayeswood in these two books has been a little bit obsessed with the girl being small. You know, like, oh my God, I'm so small. <laughs> and I'm like, is this gonna be a theme? Cause I don't really like that in sex scenes. And I'm like, is this gonna be a theme throughout all of her books? Like the girl being like, oh my God, I'm so tiny. <laughs> So yeah, I think if that annoys you, be warned, because it is in the love hypothesis and it is in this, and I'm just hoping it's not in the other two novellas, because it's like, girl, come on, this can't be in every single one of your books, like, we can't do that. But um, yeah, I really, really liked it. It's only like three and a half hours, the audiobook, so if you liked the love hypothesis, I would 100% recommend that you give this a listen. Okay, time for the hits. 
Time for the hits. So I only had two five stars, well only, but I had two five stars this month. The first of which was A Skin Full of Shadows by Frances Harding. So let's talk about this. I did this vlog at the start of the month for Novelic. I worked with an app called Novelic, which is like a book club, book recommendation app, which I really, really enjoyed. And I did like a video getting recommendations from the app. And this is one of the recommendations I got. I'd never heard of this book, never heard of this author before. And now she is like a favorite author who I want to read all of her backlist. This was absolutely incredible. Probably my favorite book I've read so far this year. It's about this girl who can kind of like consume spirits. It's getting weird. And oh, it's hard to describe this book without spoiling it. I would definitely go recommend that vlog because I did a much better job than I'm going to do now. And her mother dies and she's sent off to live with her father's family. Her father is dead, but she's sent off to live with his family. And things aren't what they seem. They're just a little bit suspicious, a little bit suspicious things going on. And I just love this. It's set at a time of civil war in the UK. It's got mystery elements. I often say my favourite books are books that merge historical, fantasy and mystery all together in one. They're my absolute favourite. The writing in this was just absolutely gorgeous. Like some of my favourite writing ever. Like I was just obsessed with the cadence of the words, the way that scenes were built up, the way the characters were developed, the way that also the plot moved. The plot was never stagnant. It was constantly moving, constantly evolving, constantly interesting. I loved this and I literally cannot wait to read all of Frances Harding's other stuff. It's like so clever. I love clever books that aren't like trying to shout from the rooftops about how clever I am, but are like subtly clever. And I just thought this was absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to read all of the rest of her stuff. I'm going to be eating up. I've already got, thanks to one of my patrons, I was ill last week and um, Rachel oh, sent me two of her other books, which was so kind and really cheered me up. So I have those two now and I cannot wait to get to them. And then my last hit for this month, my last five star was Under the Whispering Door by TJ Clunes. This is also in that publishers sent me these books of vlog and oh, I'm gonna cry I'm gonna cry in this we're following Wallace Price who has just died and he goes to this he's sent to this tea shop which is the place you go when you die to kind of come to terms with that and there's like a found family that develops there and um this book is just absolutely gorgeous I, I loved House of Cerulean Sea I don't think it's quite up there with House of Cerulean Sea for me I don't think that perhaps the characters and the plotting is as great but the ending of this was just so gorgeous and I think what it talks about in grief and loss and it's it's perception on death and kind of like the thoughts that it's giving to that is just so gorgeous and kind of puts this hopeful spin on everything without being like oh my god sunshine and rainbows you know while still honoring that hurt that comes with that you know I <laughs> so gorgeous and I'm trying not to get emotional but it was just very very poignant and I think TJ Cohn has a great skill of writing books like this that feel so important and beautiful at the same time that feel like they're tackling difficult subjects whilst still being hopeful and being magical and retaining that magic so I absolutely loved it I thought it was amazing probably not loved it as much as House in the Serenian Sea, but I still really, really loved it. So there we have it, everyone. That is my wrap up for April. Let me know what you thought of any of these books that I've mentioned today. Let me know how you did in April. Let me know how many books you've read. If you beat me, please let me know. <laughs> not that it's a competition, but it is. No. Um, <laughs> let me know how many books you read, how your reading went. I would love to know. If you've gotten to the end of this video, I'm just feeling like a heart emoji. Comment your favourite colour as a heart emoji. Let's spread the positivity going into May. Um, I love you all so, so much. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!